Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I will be doing an art collab with the Arts Addicts Alliance. And this month's theme is historical period and the $10 or under art challenge. So this is what I created. And let's start with just a few clips that I took at the dollar store. Be right back. How cool, it's a brush cleaning pot. This is awesome. I'm gonna take it in the color red because we only have so many colors here. That is so cool. And they have oil pastels is the only one with the primary colors and some extra ones. So I think this is what I'm gonna grab on. Hopefully it does me some good. Take these premium ones, but there is no blue or yellow. We got this green, a pink, and a red. Let's see. Other ones. Okay, I think I'm gonna take the watercolor ones. And then I'm gonna take red, yellow, and they still don't have blue in this either. Ugh. These brushes do not look the best. So here's what I got. A silver tray for the watercolor palettes, some craft paper for the oil pastels, the oil pastels, the watercolor tempura paint, the premium white and red acrylics, these brushes that didn't look the best, but they look the best out of the selection, and the Crafter Square yellow and Crayola blue, and a canvas that I actually did not end up using at all. I actually couldn't film too much in the dollar store because I was low-key kind of embarrassed I don't know I'm just I guess I'm too shy I felt a little bit awkward recording and talking to myself I don't know I don't know how other youtubers do it but I guess I'm gonna have to get over it for some future challenges if I ever do anything like that again I started by first watching all of the materials that I had gotten and these oil pastels just weren't doing it for me I just couldn't imagine them blending smoothly but that could easily be because of the texture and the surface of my sketchbook so I think I gotta give it a fair shot on some pastel paper. So the consistency of this watercolor was really weird. I liked the way that the colors mixed together but I wasn't too sure about it. I also tried to go back and reactivate it so here's a clip of that. I first tried to use just some water to revive the paint that wasn't working so then I sprayed some paint on it and then this happened so that seemed okay. I think the tray was awesome as a mixing palette. I loved it. I'm wiping it off. And now I'm moving on to the acrylic paints. I was super, super, super impressed by the premium paints that they had, the which would be the red and the white here. As you can see, that red is so opaque and goes on really thick. The yellow one was the crafters square or square. I'm pretty sure it's called crafter square. It was the crafter square and the blue one was the Crayola. I wasn't really impressed with those two colors. Um, I tried also mixing colors with it, but I wasn't the biggest fan, so I decided to work on the watercolors, and here I am sketching it and doing the final outline on some watercolor paper. But anyways, I did end up settling for the, I don't wanna say settling, I did end up going with the watercolor paints, the watercolor tempura paints. As I mentioned before, the consistency felt a little strange, but I can't really speak on consistency because the only watercolor tubes that I have to compare is the Daniel Smith watercolor tubes that we received from Palafel Packs. And Daniel Smith is artist grade watercolor, meaning they're professional, meaning they're top notch. So I'm not really sure how fair it is to compare them. That's the only thing that I've ever tried. And that's the only watercolor tubes that I have to compare. So I'm really not sure exactly what I was expecting. But this paint actually felt like I was painting with egg whites. I know that sounds weird. I don't know if you can picture what I'm trying to explain here, but that's kind of what it felt like. It felt like egg whites when I was moving it around. Now the colors do actually mix really nicely and they dry pretty true. As you can see, I was mixing colors on the palette or the serving tray that I ended up using as a palette 
and I would swatch it in my sketchbook to make sure it's a color that I like. Then I would water it down and continue painting in the layers. Now, before I even keep going, let me actually explain really quickly what Art Addicts Alliance is. Art Addicts Alliance is a YouTube art group where once a month we collab on a theme and it's really cool to see what a group of artists do when they take a common theme and just kind of interpret it in their own way and create some content out of what the theme is supposed to be so i will leave the link in the descriptions below please feel free to go check them out they are awesome trust me on that for my piece i decided to redraw or repaint i guess vermeer's iconic portrait of a girl with a pearl earring and I actually wanted to do this because I fell in love with the book by Tracy Chevalier. I did read that book a super long time ago like probably in my teens so I definitely want to revisit that. I just know that that book was like engraved in my brain as one of my favorite books so I'm gonna go back and read it again so that I could kind of remember why. One of the things that really stick out as to why I loved this book so much is the way that Tracy described how they would make paint back in the day and I was just so fascinated and how like this girl wanted to become Vermeer's apprentice and she just learned or was taught by him on how to make paint and all this. So definitely on my to-do list but I absolutely love the art and I just wanted to kind of play around with uh, stylization and just try something different. Normally I do very realistic portraits or try to do realistic portraits. This time I wanted to do something different and I really did end up loving the way it came out with these materials and I know in the original portrait um, Vermeer did not give the girl any eyebrows or well he gave her very faint eyebrows but you know since this was my own interpretation of the painting I ended up giving her eyebrows because it just didn't look right to me. I tried to stick light, but it just, I don't know, it just wasn't working out. It wasn't meeting my expectation. In my sketchbook, I actually painted the original sketch with um, Kuretake's watercolors, and I think I used Ohuhu markers as the base. I didn't film me actually painting it but you will see the comparison at the end of the video and in that one I did not give her eyebrows I do like the way that one came out I like the illustration in my sketchbook more but I love the final product with the colors from the Dollar Tree if that makes sense like I like the colors I like the way the colors came out on this way more than I liked the sketchbook but I liked the sketchbook's illustration way more than I liked this final illustration. If that even makes sense to anyone. I posted this on Instagram and it actually did really well. I was quite surprised with the amount of love that I received for this repaint of Vermeer. Um, my favorite part of this painting would definitely, definitely have to be the fabric. As I was layering and layering and mixing colors and I really love the transparency of watercolor and how you can really just layer the colors on top of each other and oh that's the other thing i was pleasantly surprised that when these watercolors dried when the layer was completely dry it was not that easy to activate the layer underneath so that was very nice i was expecting it to be super easy to reactivate and possibly not work i wasn't expecting much from these watercolors let's just say that i really wasn't expecting much i mean for five paints for a dollar like what can you really expect i, I was kind of expecting to struggle so i was really pleasantly surprised when i saw that the quality of this was actually decent and it's something that i would not mind practicing with you know how sometimes you get that fear or at least I get that fear of putting expensive products to waste, so I kind of never touch it. Almost like you feel like your skills aren't worthy of using this expensive material because it's just going to go to complete-ish and not look at all like what you want it to look like or like what you were expecting it to look like. 
I don't have that fear with these watercolor paints because they were only a dollar. And I'm not talking about a dollar each. The entire pack was a dollar. So you have your primary colors and you have white and black, which is awesome. I really wanted to try the premium acrylics because I, as I said, I was so impressed by how thick and opaque that red was. I was really, really disappointed the fact that they didn't have yellow or blue because I definitely would have done something with that. I've said it many times on my channel, I am more accustomed to acrylics. Acrylics is my thing, it's what I started with, it's what I'm most comfortable with. So I really would have, really would have loved to, to use those, but unfortunately they just didn't have the primary colors so it just wasn't going to work. And the acrylics that I got, they were all different consistencies, so I don't think that it would have made a very nice painting. I mean, it could have, but some parts would have just been too thin and other parts would have been too thick. And I don't know, the way I felt about it, it just, it didn't seem like it was going to be something that I would be pleased with. So that's why I went with the watercolors. And I'm really, really happy that I did end up going with them because as I said, for a dollar, I mean, I don't mind using, as you can see, I put a glop of red, a huge glop of yellow, and I didn't feel guilty about it, which was awesome. It feels great to not feel guilty about using materials. I didn't use the entire colors, but I didn't feel like I put those colors to waste because, you know, it was just practice. It was just for fun. And I really need to learn how to let go and be able to apply that same practice to all my art materials. For example, I got the golden acrylics in, I forgot what art subscription I received them, but I'm so, I was so excited to get it. And I have not used that paint since the day that I received it. Cause I did an art unboxing. I really gotta go back to that. But of course I haven't because golden acrylics are so intimidating because they're so professional and such a high, standard that I just feel really like if it doesn't come out amazing I'm gonna feel a little bit of shame you know like oh what a waste of such good paints but I really need to stop thinking that way in fact I think a lot of people need to stop thinking that way I, I some artists that I know have that same common fear that they just don't feel like what they're going to make with the supplies is worthy or good enough of the supplies that they're actually using which sounds kind of crazy saying it out loud, but it's a real feeling. It's a real feeling that I have. But anyways, going back to the painting, enough ranting about that. Um, any more cons? I don't think I have any more cons. The consistency felt a little bit weird, but again, I don't paint with watercolor and I especially don't know what painting out of a tube feels like, except for that Daniel Smith that we received from Paletteful. And that's really, you know, top grade watercolors so i'm not exactly sure what to expect but hey it was pretty good i mean for someone that's not familiar with watercolors i think it came out pretty awesome i think i i, I was able to use it it's beginner friendly i would say maybe not beginner friendly but it's definitely intermediate friendly and even if you are a beginner feel free to buy it and just try it out anyways it's only a dollar and it's art so I mean, I don't really know what else to say. It was, it was awesome. I loved it. I loved this painting. I'm going to order it on canvas. I took a picture of it and I'm going to print it out on canvas because honestly, that's how much I really enjoyed painting it. And it's gonna be hanging by my art stuff, which I hope I get to show soon. And yeah, it's gonna be part of my favorites collection because we should all have our favorite paintings of ourselves. So again, please check out the Art Addicts Alliance made up of Jazz Capri, Web Light Dreams, Jenna Gets Creative, Pan Dimensional Space Zombie, All Funnies and Games, Aurora's Art World, Blue Finn, The Artsy Pineapple, Justin Dwyer Artistry, Enjoy Drawing with Mary, and Newly Me, Dark Star Creations. You will be able to find everyone's information in the description bar down below. Anyways, get ready for some ASMR of, you know, that tape thingy, peeling off the tape. Here we go.
Here's the final product, up close and personal, and there's the original illustration with the Kuretake watercolors. I loved it. Thank you so much for joining me. This was so much fun to do. I hope that this video at least kind of inspires you to not be intimidated by the quality of paints and then to just try something new. Thank you so much, so much, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!